Once British modernism got underway, it did move quite quickly. This one is quite interesting in, in that it shows the use of the um, solid timber to um, span the living room. I think it was in, in the council offices in Isha that I, I, I went in there inquiring about land availability and so on. I mean, we were very green and didn't know anything. And Ken was next to me in the queue and we got talking together. And my husband and I went over to see him and, and he had exactly, you know, the ideas which interested us. And, uh, you know, I think we were very fortunate to come across him almost by accident. It was such an imaginative concept, the house, and, you know, many people were somewhat bewildered. The garden being a wild garden doesn't require a lot of maintenance. This was part of the brief, I think, that my husband wanted a house that would be very simple to maintain, with not a lot of wood to paint, and, and of course the, um, the exposed timber has never been decorated. Perhaps it should be, I don't know. It doesn't get decorated, I can tell you. <laughs> A general awareness of the need for social change. Then, of course, the Festival of Britain came. I think it was intended as a desperate antidote to the war. Fairly simple economic means of construction. The use of um, timber framing as well as um, mass construction. Simple repetition of plans and um, material and form. Was I influenced by him? Obviously I was, but I think also when I went to Eric Lyons, I went there because I thought there was a person who, you know, had um, feelings that were in one's own context. He has left quite a legacy there, I think. Take these elements, rather like Park Lee's is a repetition of the same, the same element, the same solution, again and again, but with variation of sighting and variation of material and 
variation of planting to give it individuality. So Hampton House literally started from that premise. The partitions are, um, in actual fact, panels that slot into tracks at floor and ceiling level and could be removed and uh, put into different sequences. So that was the background to Hampton House and that, I think, was the basis on which it, it got the award. I had been interested in timber construction as a possibility and thought that timber was an underused material and couldn't see why it shouldn't be used structurally rather like steel and um, could be framed and gridded. A movement towards simplicity and rationality um, and with the introduction of new materials like iron and steel there was a structural audacity that there couldn't have been before thing we did was view his collection before we started actually talking about the requirements of the house and then we started talking about the brief and the accommodation that he wanted and the way in which he wanted to live in the middle of it and have it sort of happening around him all the time and that's the way in which the design for the picker house started. Courtyard became important as as the um, communicating view across to the rest of the building, and the exterior would develop gradually with the planning and with the interior layout and with the volumes and spaces, because it's all a question of proportion as well. It came up because it was, it was pretty increasingly obvious that the house was getting a bit cluttered. Very, very essential. To me, the tactile quality of materials is very, very important. But also there's a sensuality in the reflection of light on things or the absorption of light.
And as far as British suburbia is concerned, a general um, lack of tautness. In, in urban situations, you can get a tightness which makes um, a sense of place. There is no sense of place if you get a, a loose suburbia.